Okay, welcome everybody to the webinar. We're just gonna wait a few more minutes uh, while people are joining, so stay tuned. Okay. So today, uh, welcome. We're, we're talking about cl transforming clinical workflows with Agnes Biles Connect and going over a case study for skilled nursing facilities. I'd like to do some introductions here. I'm Carrie Souza, the VP of Marketing with AMD Global Telemedicine, and I'm joined today by Charlie Hain, the Vice President of Colane Healthcare, and Amy Miller, the Regional Director of Growth at AMD Global Telemedicine. So we're going to be talking to you today about um, <clears throat> how a an organization that had 50 plus skilled nursing facilities um, implemented Agnes Biles Connect to benefit them in many ways. And one of the things we want you to consider is what if there was a way to cut time spent collecting patient vitals in half? Is that something that would interest you? Is that uh, would save you a lot of time? Can you imagine the possibilities of, of what you could do with patient care if you had more time back? So today's discussion, we're going to kind of go through this case study, talk a little bit more about how we've been able to do that, and um, then open it up for discussion. If anybody has any questions, feel free along the way to put your questions in the Q&A chat box, um, and we'll go from there. Amy, Charlie? Great. So, hey, glad to be here. Thank you, Carrie, for setting this up as well. You, Amy. Uh, <clears throat> Again, Charlie Hinn uh, with Elaine Healthcare. And uh, what I think is really most interesting about this particular use case, for lack of a better term, to quote a project management term, is this is a large regional operator of skilled nursing facilities. And yes, in the sunny south, but this does apply in the wintry north as well. So it doesn't matter geographically where this is. But I think what's interesting to note is that when you look at the number of employees across their enterprise and you think about um, the manual capture of data compounded with the transient workforce that's really existing in, in the long-term care marketplace, the turnover, the training, retraining, all these kinds of things, I think you're going to see as we dive through uh, this presentation how we've been able to capitalize on improving some of that workflow. Some of the challenges, for example, as you can well imagine, you can, I mean, it's really evidenced in the picture there as well in terms of manuals, vitals collection. I mean, think about your frontline caregivers that are very busy and remember, put on the short staffing hat, the strained staffing hat, new provider, you know, a. Uh, uh, care providers coming into the scene and you, you're trying to write down all this information or get the information, write it down on a notepad, what have you, or maybe key it into a handheld device, a phone, notepad, what have you, take it and enter it into your system. And so I think you can imagine that when you are manually gathering data, let alone just uh, transposing of numbers, those kinds of things, but Think about the additional transcription errors when entering that information into the system, which actually leads to another discussion of how long before that information is entered into the electronic health record. I mean, is it five minutes, two minutes? Is the frontline caregiver doing that immediately? Um, likely not. You know, likely there's going to be a delay in that information get into the system. And so when you couple that need to capture that information, which by and large was done manually. And you add to that something that seems as simple as uh, capturing activities of daily living with a handheld device. You're managing now a piece of paper, you're managing a device and all the complications that can potentially go with uh, device management to try and get what? Real-time data, that really impacts the quality of care for those residents. And so this was a challenge that our mutual customer had, and we came up with a solution to help work through those challenges. Can you talk a little bit more, uh, Charlie and Amy, about you know, what kind of errors were there in Vitals data were they seeing so that people could relate to this? 
Carrie, great question. I mean, if you think about, <clears throat> and again, I'm not a clinician, no enough to be dangerous, but what I understand is from the clinical mindset uh, of a lot of clinical managers is that it's how to be more proactive than reactive in the data that you're capturing. And so if you think about just thresholds, for example, maybe maybe a, a patient or resident's blood pressure is above or below a certain threshold. Well, depending upon what that threshold is and what the results are, I mean, you might need to take quick action to help the condition of a, of a resident or a patient. So any delay in getting that information to the patient's electronic chart with all the associated alerting that would happen in a robust EHR like ours, you know, you compromise that ability by doing it manually. And so that's one example of, you know, a uh, uh, an alert that could uh, be generated that isn't if you're not doing it timely. Yeah, Amy, I'm not sure if there's anything you want to add to that. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Charlie. So I wanted to add to that, if you can think about what's collected in vitals data. So obviously you've got the patient's name, first name, last name. Um, oftentimes you're doing blood pressure, SpO2, pulse rate, temperature. So it's a lot of information to write down. And then are those numbers transposed where they may be missing a digit or, you know, maybe the, the patient's name was misspelled. So having that information written down can add to uh, additional Trans, you know, transposition errors into the EHR system. And then you've already taken the vitals data for that patient and it needs to be entered in timely as, as Charlie mentioned. So um, that delay can obviously cause some, some challenges when you're trying to treat the patient. Uh, but if you guys are like me, I write down a lot of notes. They're not always easy to read. And then in this particular scenario, I wanted to mention how these were being captured. So if you can think about the CNA writing down the vitals information, then they're handing that off to an RN. So the RN has to take that information, hope they can read it all, and then get that into the EHR system. So it's just multiple opportunity for data error, as well as not getting the information in in real time. Okay, great. That's, that's helpful. I'm sure a lot of people can relate to that on the day-to-day -day basis of what they face. So we talked about the challenges. What is the solution? So as, as Charlie mentioned, um, you know, obviously there are staffing challenges. There are challenges with having enough time to take care of patients. Um, there's also financial challenges. How do you justify making an investment on a product? So, so we had to have a solution that, that kind of met all of those needs. So what you're seeing here is the Agnes Vitals Connect solution. It's an automated vitals collection solution that is integrated with the Colane EHR system. So what does that mean? That allows you to collect vitals data in real time and transmit that to the EHR system without the dual uh, application uh, of entering in information. So you're doing everything essentially one time. Um, also, this application allows you to use single sign-on. So your same credentials you have for the EHR are the credentials that you would use for Agnes Vitals Connect. Uh, the other thing that made this use case interesting is Charlie mentioned about having another device for the activities of daily living collection. What we found was we could actually take an automated vitals card and make it dual purpose. So you could actually use it for vitals collection as well as the web POCS information that would need to be entered in for the activities of daily living. So from a financial perspective, it was much easier to justify instead of having multiple different solutions, having one that combined everything together. So if you guys have been in the marketplace and you've looked for an automated vitals solution, obviously there's lots of options out there, but they're not all created equal. So I wanted to tell you a little bit about the Agnes Vitals Connect cart. So you can see that there's a tablet that's on the cart. I've seen vitals collection solutions that are just a stick cart with a vitals device. Um, so that's helpful, but it doesn't allow you to take information that's being collected and transmit that to an EHR system. Um, this particular cart does have the 10 inch tablet. It also has an all in one vitals monitor. So that allows you to collect blood pressure, temperature, SpO2 and pulse. And then this particular unit does come with a one-year hardware warranty, but will actually extend the warranty up to five years. And that's the useful life of this equipment. 
Uh, the other thing that makes this particular uh, collection device a little unique is the fact that we provide on-site installation and training. So we set up the equipment, we test the integration, we train the staff and make sure that everyone is confident and comfortable in using the solution. And if any of you that are attending um, have tried out an automated, an automated vital solution before, feel free to maybe share some of your challenges that you faced or things that you found out in the chat. It could be a good conversation for us to address a little bit later. So at this time, I'd like to show you and walk you through the workflow of using Agnes Vitals Connect. So it's like any other technology, Obviously, you have to get people on board and get them excited about using it. So this is all about streamlining the workflow, making things easier, reducing the errors, and allowing more time for patient care. So I'm actually going to show you the device itself that collects the vitals, but also walk you through the workflow of the software. So what you guys are seeing right now is Agnes Vitals Connect, and you can see everything's all in one application. So I'm going to walk you through a typical workflow of bringing that card up to the patient's bedside, collecting the vitals, and then the real-time transferring of that information into the EHR system. So I have here the vitals unit that's mounted on the cart. So the vitals information you can see on the screen here, as that is collected, that information goes into the Agnes platform. Typically, the first thing that you would do in these scenarios is you would either enter the patient information in manually, or in this case, we're completely integrated with Colane EHR, so we can actually bring patient information into the platform. So the nurse would click on the demographics information, and then you can see here there's a search patient option. So I'm just going to type in the first few letters of the patient's name. So what it's doing is it's going through that EHR medical record and it's looking for all the matches to that. So in this case, I'm going to select the patient. All that information is auto-filled at that point. So again, it's reducing time. It's pulling in the patient name. It's pulling in the MRN number. It's pulling in the sex of the patient and the date of birth. So at this point in time, that's when the nurse would be utilizing each of the attachments that are on the vitals monitor. So as they put the blood pressure cuff on the patient, they click this black button here, and that's going to get the blood pressure information. And you can see the diastolic and systolic information is going to auto-populate automatically. Then they can put on the pulse oximeter. That is going to take the SpO2 as well as the pulse rate. And we also have an infrared thermometer that can be used on forehead or wrist, and that's going to pull in the temperature. So those are the things that are collected automatically using the device. If you need to collect additional information such as height, weight, pain, number of respirations, those are free text fields, so you can enter that information in. So once that's been completed, the nurse is going to take a snapshot of the information. They're going to click the check mark where it says vitals and they're going to save to EMR. Now, that's it. <laughs> it's all you have to do, and the information is transferred to the EMR system. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like when the information transfers from Agnes Vitals Connect into the Colane EHR, and let Charlie talk you through that. So by default, you'll see that the that the chart inside of the Clay and EHR is very reminiscent of what you might see in a chart in what you would refer to as a paper world. But there's a fundamental difference. I mean, this is for ease of navigation, et cetera. What I think is great about this, in real time, you can see this stuff happening in building this tracking and trending that's happening. So the beauty of this, which obviously is not the, the, the purpose of today's call, but I think it's important to note is that you can take the this baseline data that you're putting in the system you can work with the claim ehr and our other our products that we have one called connect which amy and, and the whole team we all know about and you can actually effectively round out real-time communication for variables of your thresholds in things like weight blood pressure o2 all these kinds of things 
in a real time manner. And, and I think that's key. And, you know, I remember being, I remember being on site at one of the locations of our customer when we were beginning the implementation of this. And, and actually even prior to that, when we were going through our trial phase, I'll never forget someone in nurse management saying, oh, this would be great. I can easily see if people are getting the stuff correctly, you know, getting the documentation in right, the values, all that stuff. And we can go get another one really easy without having to run back down the hall to, to key stuff in. So it's those kinds of things, those little footsteps, those re rewalks back and down that really we save an enormous amount of time with, with this integration. Plus also providing you the opportunity to act more proactively about the data that's being received, specifically as it relates to higher and lower thresholds, and then also um, allow you to be more efficient in your workflow. Amy? Yeah, thanks. So I did want to mention one thing that I feel like is very important. This was a provider-driven decision to go with this platform for this particular customer. So providers were not able to find the vitals information for the patient. And one of the reasons for that was the nurses that were entering the information in the EHR system manually were putting that in different sections. So for like a good example, the notes section, for instance. So if you also are seeing that challenge with your providers where they're going in and they can't find the information in the correct fields, this would completely eliminate that challenge. That's a great point, Amy. 100%. Okay, great. Thank you for the demo, Amy and Charlie, for walking us through that, that workflow. <clears throat> so let's talk a little bit about the impact of having a deployed solution like this. So in this particular use case, uh, they were we they were accomplishing several different things. A there were different uh, vital signs, uh, solutions that were being tested, looked at, considered, et cetera. But at the end of the day, they were not as robust as what the AMD solution is providing. That coupled with the ease of integration between AMD and Colain, it actually really did a couple of different things. Number one, when you consider, and let me just take a a sidetrack for a minute, you talk about life expectancy or the useful life of a device or what have you. You know, when, think about it. When you've got 1,000, 1,500, 2,000 devices across your your uh, your enterprise, even in a, if it's a just a, a one location building, you still got a lot of devices that are out there. And if you think about it, if you don't want people to be cruising up the internet posting on Facebook, Snapchat, all those kinds of things, you got to have a way to lock down that device so that that device can actually be used for what its intended use is. And that is providing real-time data to help augment patient care. And so we talk about useful life devices, all these kinds of things. And I think Amy mentioned that earlier. If not, she'll definitely talk about that. But what is the useful life of a brand new tablet or handheld device, phone, et cetera, and you're providing care that slips out of the pocket and goes into the toilet. <laughs> that useful life is now shot, right? And so <laughs> when you think about it- In the toilet. <laughs> you place that device, you've got, you've got the cost. If you're trying to isolate people from doing things they ought not be doing while they're at work, you've got to find a way to manage that. And all those things add up cost incrementally. And so- when you consider, and, and if you're in this position where your operation has multiple devices that you're managing, you're struggling to find a way to manage those devices cost effectively so people aren't doing what they shouldn't be doing while on the device, and you're replacing more of them than needed, not even just the toilet experience, but also when you're talking about dropping or being stolen to be pawned at a pawn shop, that's harder to do when you have everything in in a one solution that's actually on a cart. And the beauty about it, the way that AMD has set this platform up is that we're able to display, because it is a web-based product that the web POCS, uh, uh, which is our point of care solution is, is distributed in that manner so that you have one 
platform, one very easy to use area for working what it is you need to do as a frontline caregiver. So, you know, when you talk about ROI, it's easy to be able to dictate or or actually share a number that a customer has had. But realistically, your ROI is going to be different than what this customer has experienced. And so take a moment and reflect on what are you doing with your mobile device management strategy now? What challenges are you having with accurate data, crucial data that really impacts how you provide care? And then what challenges are you having keeping people out of areas they don't need to be on the internet? So, Amy, anything you want to add to that? Sure. So one of the things this customer mentioned was it's really hard to put a number on efficiency. And it is hard. How do you say being this much more efficient is saving us this much in financials? It's called soft costs. That's what we call it is soft costs. So it's really hard to put a number on that. So what they essentially did was what are our hard costs? Device management fees, having to replace the handheld devices, you know, just looking at what that cost would be versus buying a new solution. And this particular customer found that they could save about 20% of what they were paying that incorporated these type of fees by having a new solution that would be dual purpose. Great. So are you, Amy, are you saying it increased, it, it, it added more costs for the equipment to manage it or the, for the, did they save overall? Saved overall and it, it actually eliminated the device management fees, which is only for mobile devices. So once you were able to use the cart to collect the activities of daily living and do the vitals collection as well, there was no longer a need for having the handheld mobile device, which means you didn't have the device management fees. And, and I would just add, you've got happier frontline caregivers. You've got happier nursing, happy your nurse management, and hopefully a happier patient. So- just thought I'd throw that bonus in. Are you able to expand a little bit more on the like time savings, you know, for doing this? I know, Amy, you went through the demo and it was three simple steps and it was pretty quick. Um, so maybe talk through that, what you've seen the customer has experienced in that area as well. Yeah. So industry standard, it typically takes about five minutes to collect vitals manually. Now that's collection, not entering in the EHR. <laughs> so about five minutes to collect vitals manually. What you guys saw for me was probably less than two minutes, but typically we're saying it takes about two minutes. So you're definitely cutting that time in half. But then you also have to factor in how much time it takes to pull up the patient in the EHR record, enter the information in. If you can't find the information, how long it takes to find that information. So you equate that in, it could be significantly more, but industry standard is five minutes to collect manually versus two minutes for automated vitals collection. Okay. And, and did this customer completely eliminate the need to write vitals on paper or are they still having to supplement that for something? No supplementing, everything's completely automated. This has been um, implemented across 50 plus facilities and there's over 191 carts. So they're completely doing everything with the vitals collection cart now. Great. And just a reminder to everybody, feel free to enter in your questions. We will address some more at the end uh, if you have more specific questions about some of the impact or RFI. So I'll take the deployment. That always seems to be, um, you know, something obviously of consideration and discussion when you're looking at new technology. I mentioned that we deployed 191 carts across 52 facilities. So obviously a very large implementation. We can do small implementations as well. Something that's very important for us is to do on-site installation. Uh, some organizations do have technical people that are on-site that can assist with these things, but a lot don't. So we know our products better than anybody else. So we actually provide an engineer to go on site. They actually do the building of the cart, connecting of the device. They test the integration of the EHR system and make sure everything is working properly. The other thing that we do is on site training. So we like to have hands on the equipment with your staff. Um, if we can do it at hub sites, that works great. We did a lot of that in this scenario, but we can also do individual facilities. 
And something else we've learned to do that works very well is doing train the trainer. So oftentimes we'll get together the directors of nursing because it's easier to take them off the floor than your other frontline staff and we'll train them. And again, you saw how simple the solution is to use. Um, very easy to train them. They feel confident going back and training their staff and then they're off to the races at that point. And Amy, how long would you say it took to get like one facility up and running? Yeah. Yeah, so so that's a great question. I mean, the on-site installation can essentially be done in a couple of hours, um, depending on how many shifts are being trained. Um, typically, there's three shifts. We, we like to get them all together if we can. If not, we'll train each one of those shifts. Um, so we were actually doing oh, probably four facilities a day, something like that. A lot of that depends on how far away those facilities are, the drive time, if people can go to hub sites. Uh, but we try to cover multiple facilities in a day, if at all possible. And then when it comes to the integration um, and the workflow and getting that set up and again, customized to the customer and what their needs are, you know, how, how hard or difficult was that to do? I can, I can tackle that one if you'd like. That's very easy. I mean, it's all standard secure connections without going into the technical deep weeds on it, but uh, Everything is secure. Everything is very quick, very efficient. And we've really got it to the point where it's always, I'm always cautious when I say plug and play, but in terms of AMD connecting with the Clean EHR platform, it is plug and play. Out of the box with very little configuration from their on site engineer, you're up and running. It's amazing how quick, even I was surprised. It was pretty mm -hmm. neat. Yeah, and one thing I'll mention that's super important is because they're single sign-on, these nurses are able to use their credentials for the Colane EHR system to log into Agnes Vitals Connect. So it's not another username and password that you have to try to remember. Okay. So we talk about accuracy and all that stuff. I can talk about it all day long, but just take a moment and just read uh, what one of the director of nursing's one of the locations said, you know, it's about being confident in the accuracy, right? And it spends time in documentation. So you can do what? Redirect that resource to providing care. Everything flows up and down the chain. Okay, so when you think about um, accuracy and efficiency, you know, think about when you have to go and correct something in a record, you know, because of audit trails, all these kinds of things, it's easier to get it right the first time coming in than having to go back and recorrect and strikeouts and all these kinds of things. So um, having that data you know, you should think about it from a clinical assessment perspective, when you're trying to provide care and, and, and work through any level of clinical assessments, you've got to have the real time data. I mean, you know, if it, if you are making your rounds for lack of a better term, trying to take care of these patients, if the data that you have is stale and not timely, it, it, it has a, you know, a compounding effect. You're going to not get the right information you need to be able to effectuate the care that's needed. And we wanted to collect these quotes from the frontline nurses. They're the ones that are utilizing the solution. So you don't have to take it from us that it's a great solution. You can take it from the quotes. You can see the impact that it's provided. It's allowed more time, obviously, for patient care, but it's also reduced some of the stress and the time constraint around collecting the vitals and making their job more efficient and easier for them. Great. If there's any more questions, I know some of you have been typing in questions along the way and I uh, tried to mix them in and address them here throughout the presentation, but if anybody has additional questions, um, feel free to enter them now. Um, I don't know if Charlie or Amy, while we're waiting to see if there's any more questions, if there's any other final thoughts. I know, Amy, we've talked about uh, the, the people that are attending this webinar about, you know, what's a logical yes. next step if we want to look at how to deploy something like this within our organization. Amy, do you just kind of want to uh, address that? 
Absolutely. So depending on the organization, um, you know, oftentimes these are decisions that have to be met with, um, you know, what are the financials? What are the impacts? Those are things that Charlie and I can assist you with. Um, also, if this is a product that you would need to have an, another demo on, we're happy to do that. Uh, we would even go as far as piloting the solution at your location if that's something that would need to happen to make a decision. Um, so we want to support you along the way. We're very confident in what we have to offer. We're happy to answer any questions you have. And if the next step would be, hey, we'd like to see another demo. Let's let's have some individual time. We'd be happy to accommodate that. Great. Well, looks like we don't have any more questions. Um, for all, those of you on the call attendees, we'll send an email, of course, after the call with a recording uh, of this webinar, if you'd like to share it with other team members at your organization or to go back to. And of course, our contact information in case you have any more questions for Charlie or Amy. We'll be there to support you. And Amy and Charlie, thank you for joining me today. Have a good day. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye.